everyone, Gina with Belly Beads Paper Jewelry here today, bringing you a basic tutorial for those of you who may be new to using the Cricut Explorer to cut their, your strips for paper beads. Um, I do have a, another um, machine, the Brother, and I kind of favor the Cricut a little more uh, for several reasons. I mean, I love both of them, but the Cricut, uh, I found that you can purchase the supplies locally, where brother, you have to buy everything online. So it was a little bit inconvenience for me. So that's why I chose the Cricut. So I thought that it would be nice um, just to give you an overall basic 101 tutorial. So here it is. Uh, I, I actually used to cut my strips by hand with a Fisker's cutter and so much changed when I began using my Cricut to cut out my strips. And the strips are always consistent and cleanly cut. First, we will open Cricut Design Space on your computer. I'm going to show you a basic way to make a classic bicone type of paper bead and the most common style, you might say. So let's now that Design Space is loaded, let's begin. From your welcome screen, screen excuse me, we are going to choose New Project, and this is your blank canvas. I'm going to be making this template for a 12 by 12 piece of scrap paper, not cardstock. These are my favorite because of their variety. Remember, the thicker the paper or cardstock, you will need to adjust the length of your strips. Thicker paper requires shorter lengths or your rolled beads will be much larger than the thinner counterparts. Design Space allows you to create using imperial inches or metric measurements. I prefer metric because I can make more precise measurements. You can use whichever you prefer. To choose the type, click the three dashes up here and scroll down to settings. Under the units, you select which type you will use, imperial or metric, then close it. Now that we've done that, let's move on. We're gonna be using a triangle shape for these strips. So click on the shapes menu and it brings up all the shapes we can make with the software. We're going to select triangles. A triangle will appear on the canvas Then we can click on the shapes again to close this menu. Now we're going to choose our dimensions. It's important to note that your shapes are locked when we create them, and I'll show you what I mean. This little lock icon right here, when it's locked, the shape's proportions are locked, so when you change the width, the height changes proportionally, and vice versa. We're going to unlock this triangle like so. Once we do that, we can make the shape how long or wide we want. I'm going to make the width 0.8 centimeters or 8 millimeters. Now I'm going to make the height 29 centimeters. I chose 29 centimeters because the Cricut mat I'm using is a 12 by 12. So the maximum height can be no longer than 29.2 centimeters or 11 and a half inches. The software always creates a quarter inch border around the mat that cannot be cut, so the maximum width or height, if you're using a 12 by 12 mat, will always be 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters. Anything longer and the software will alert you that your image is too long. Now, although you can make longer cuts if you're using a Cricut 24 inch mat, but that's for another tutorial. All right, so the maximum width an image can be is 11 and a half inches, 29.2 centimeters, because mats are always 12 inches wide, no wider. Now that we've selected our dimensions, let's choose the position for our shape. You can drag the shape where you want it, or you can use this position menu up here where it shows X and Y. Watch here when I move the shape. These coordinates change. In this case, I want the shape in the uppermost left position so I can change the X for horizontal to zero and then press enter. The shape goes to the left. When I do the same for the Y, it goes to the top. Now we want to duplicate the shape a number of times to make a full sheet. First, we right click on the object and select duplicate. It makes an exact copy of the object. Now we want to move the copy so it's exactly next to the first. I find it easier to type the coordinates so the objects line up perfectly. If they don't, the strips will be incorrect. I do this by changing the X and Y values. In this case, I will change the Y to zero and the X to 0.8 for eight millimeters. 
The original shape is eight millimeters wide, and if I put the copy at 0.8 horizontally, they line up perfectly. So now I actually have three strips now. That is one of the benefits of using symmetrical shapes. You get a full sheet of strips with a little waist. After I've copied the first two, the next two will line up at 1.6 centimeters or 16 millimeters. I will continue to duplicate the groups by clicking the Select All button and duplicating the group shapes like this. All right, so it might be a little confusing, but be patient with yourself. It is a learning curve. But as long as every shape is eight millimeters apart, they will line up perfectly. This process is the same regardless of the shape's width, meaning that if your strips are six millimeters or 10 millimeters, for instance, then you repeat every six millimeter or 10 millimeter respectfully. It just depends on the size you choose for your first shape. I keep doing this until um, the width reaches as close to but no further than 29 centimeters across. Eventually I get a full page like this, which I've already prepared. You can see that the last triangle ends just before 29 centimeters, which is ideal. We have one more thing to add, and that is a cut line. A cut line is a single cut that is made on your mat. In this case, it will be used to cut along the top, otherwise your top strips will still be attached to the border of the paper. To make a cut, we click on shapes and choose score line. Click, click the shapes again to close the menu and you will see your cut line. Now we want to click and drag it off to the side here. Now we go up and click here on line type and choose cut. Now it's a cut line. Next, we need to rotate it 90 degrees by going up here to the rotate box and typing 90, and then hitting enter. Next, we need to lengthen it so it will cut all, um, so it'll cut all along the line at the top here. So let's go up to the size and in the width box, type 29.2 centimeters, which is the max width. Incidentally, we do not need to unlock cut lines. They are uh, one dimensional. Finally, we make the X and Y position zero. That will put the cut at the top and left so it cuts across the whole page. On this view, it might seem as though it doesn't line up, but it will all make it, um, it will on the make it screen, so don't worry. You're almost there, but first I wanna show you a common mistake that drove me batty until I found out the correct way. First, let's click make it and watch what happens. The software automatically spaces the shapes and spreads them onto a multiple um, mats. That's not what you want. So let's click cancel and go back. We, okay, so what we need to do is select all and come down here and click attach. This will attach all the shapes together and make it one object. Now we click make it. You can see now that all the triangle strips are tightly together on one mat. Now you can see that everything is aligned and how many strips you are going to get out of, the, out of this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Also, you can see the quarter inch border around the paper outlined in red that I mentioned er earlier. So let's get ready to cut. Now we click continue and connect to our machine. All right, so then um, then after you do that, click select Cricut device, and this will depend whether your machine is connected via Bluetooth or uh, USB as mine is. At the point, um, at that point, follow the prompts to the screen to cut the Cricut, and, do, and that does the rest for you. Once the cutting is complete, you will have a quarter inch border to remove around the paper and maybe a small piece of waste paper on the right side of the mat. That's it. Otherwise, you've got a lot of rolling to do, as this particular template yields number of strips. 
I hope this was helpful. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on the bell to um, remind you of when my next video is coming up. And I will have a second one on um, SVG files. Thank you very much for watching and have fun.